my title, 32 years of Metafont. And uh, uh, why am I celebrating 32 years? Everybody else celebrate 30 years. What, why am I talking about 32 years? Well, 32 and, and all, the, all the powers of 2, like 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, these are a big deal for computer scientists. Uh, the, the greatest day of my life was my 64th birthday, really. Uh, we had a special, my wife uh, uh, arranged a special surprise for me on my 64th birthday. And really, was, you know, if anybody asked me what was the high point, uh, it would have to be that, that day. Uh, um, you know, even the Beatles uh, predicted this when they said, when you're 64, you know. Uh, but um, but, but uh, I can't wait for Metafont to be 64, so I'm celebrating 32 for, uh, for Metafont. Now, last, last Wednesday I, uh, uh, was Luigi Cherubini's 256th birthday. Um, and so I celebrated that by listening to, you know, more than an hour of his string quartet. Um, so and so, the, so um, uh, what was I doing 32 years ago today? Well, uh, I was writing... I was trying to figure out how to advance <laughs> to, to the next CI. Yeah, it's not doing anything. It seems to be dead. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> this is called the intersection of art and technology. <laughs> Do we have any representatives of Apple here tonight? Yeah, so, uh, he, so, so he, he, here is it going. Ah, okay. So, so I was I was writing. I, I was entering into my computer chapter two of this uh, of this book, which was uh, 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 this, I mean exactly this was September twentieth, nineteen eighty four. But earlier that year. Um, uh, was was the was the class that uh, that David uh, referred to? It, it was the only time Stanford actually had a class to, specifically devoted to font design, uh, and and uh, Chuck Bigelow and Richard Southall uh, and I for ten weeks uh, we taught a class about font design using Metafont, and at that time Metafont was just being written uh, uh, workstations. Uh, uh, the, the Sun workstations had, had had just been delivered. They had no operating system. They uh, uh, we were using the first editor on them. Everything was crashing, but but it was a really exciting class, um, and uh, and so I'll tell you a little about this uh, about this course first. Um, that, now I also want to mention though before I before I do anything else that uh, uh, it's really appropriate to talk about this in San Francisco because. San Francisco is one of the only cities in the world that has a Font Boulevard. <laughs> did, did, how many of you have ever been to Font Boulevard? Uh, uh, so, 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 so you know, and, and it, it's uh, uh, well, of course you look into the history and you, you say, why does San Francisco have a Font Boulevard? And uh, the answer is that uh, it's named after Father Font, who was one of the uh, uh, early visitors to California in, in 1776. But anyway. Uh, 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 I, I, I have to show you something that one of my students gave me uh, a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> it, it turns out that the, that the sign for Font, Font Boulevard was being retired, and so it, would, and so it was available for sale. And, and he found it, and, and, and so now I have uh, it's about this big, <laughs> and it, it has pride of place in my house. Okay, so now this class that I, it, that, that we taught. Um, uh, I don't know about three. There, there were three dozen students in the class, and uh, I can show you what uh, who, one of the first exercises that we did. Uh, the students were supposed to design a border, uh, and uh, so so they had to had to design uh, some character to use at the top of the border that would be that would be repeated, uh, one for the left, one for the right, one for the bottom, and then. Uh, uh, also, four characters for the four corners, and they were supposed to fit together so that you, that, that would make a border. And uh, 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 so, so we have about three dozen of these. 
Um, and uh, well, I'm, I, this is just what, one example, but you see second from the bottom is Dan Mills. He was one of the people that David said uh, I started with Ar Arnie Olis at the bottom. He was Stanford's printer. Uh, Bruce LeBan uh, uh, went on to, uh, to found several startup companies. In fact, everybody in the class turned out to I, I, you know, have quite an interesting career uh, during the, the 32 years that elapsed since then. Anne Lasko Harville, I, I'm not sure, but her, but her uh, husband, uh, Young Harville, uh, it was one of the great pioneers of, of virtual reality a few years later, and so, so on. So, and, and Young was was our thing this class too. So at the end of this course, uh, we we had a day when we went to when we went to San Francisco and visited uh, different places around the city, uh, and we also made made a pilgrimage to Font Street, as as you can see. So so uh, well, let's see. Um, Second from the left is Dikron, who's here tonight. Um, Richard Southall would have been, um, he's the second from the right in the front row. Um, Dave Siegel, uh, Lynn Ruggles, a uh, lot of people, that, that they, I'm not sure how many of them are connected to the audience tonight. Um, but we also decided to make a, a condensed font. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, of course, we need an italic font as well. <laughs> okay, so 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 all all of this story is told in a in a book that that uh, that, that Dikron helped me publish uh, called Digital Typography, and and this this book uh, has everything uh, uh, essentially uh, the, uh, that I know about typography. That you know that it, my work on typography. Uh, from, from from these these uh, these days, and um, well, David said it was it, it was uh, you know sort of a detour in my life or something. It, it, it was how do I how do I say it? Um, I'm so glad that uh, to have had this experience, uh, especially because of uh, not only because of all the beautiful uh, things that were made and that, that I got to. See, but 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 because of the wonderful people that I met, somehow the the, the graphic artists that I that I've known have been about way up there, and it, it's up the best people I that I've had a chance to uh, get to know during the year. Um, I also should say, by the way, that this uh, that the cover of this book was designed by Colt Cumston, who who who's, happens to be here from Illinois uh, uh, today in, in the audience. So, okay, now. Um, this uh, oh, oh yeah this cover uh, uh, the, the ends are are by Matthew Carter variations on, on uh, uh, to, to make a side it did but it, but in the background if you look closely you'll see a font that's that's made entirely of ends um, and that was an experimental font where we just wanted to, to have text but we didn't want people to read it to read it we were just experimenting with with uh, line breaks and spacing. And uh, and then we found out later that uh, that if you if you were clever you could act you could actually read it though uh, because some of the letters are wider than others and so so it made, made an interesting code okay now I want to tell you how Metafont worked because it was different from uh, the other the other systems that people have been working on for for designing type at the time um, but but it was something that seemed to me. Uh, my my goal was uh, not to just copy what uh, uh, w w what somebody's design was, but but actually to to teach a computer how to draw letters. Uh, so so you you don't just say uh, uh, you, you know t take a photograph of this and, and trace these outlines and so on. Uh, no, you say somehow w w when you draw a letter. Uh, th there's some meaning. Uh, you you want to connect certain things to other things, and that makes it look. Like. So so anyway, I'm, I'm going to take you through uh, the way Metafont uh, drew the the a, a capital letter A, uh, and this was five years before 1984. This was uh, uh, so in '79 uh, was when I did my prototype uh, and experiments, which uh, which led to this. So. Um, 
I start out, and I, and I know how wide I want the A to be, uh, 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 because I, I, I have been, uh, I, I, my model for this particular style of type was a monotype font called eight. It's called modern eight A, and and I knew the monotype had, I think it's thirteen units in letter A or something like that. How many units there are, and then there's a little sidebar on there. So now, uh, so, so I I tell the computer, okay, pick up a pen, and draw a line. Uh, pick up a wide pen and draw a line that goes from the uh, from the top of the uh, cap height down to the baseline. Um, it, you know, there's a cap height up there, then you can see a place for the X height, then there's another line which is sort of where the E, the, 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 the bar cross bar on the E comes through. And so it says, go, go up, uh, you know, so just above the cap height and come down to the baseline with, the, with your wide pen. And start in the, you know, start about in the middle at the top, but come but but, but come uh, uh, at the right. You want to be two units from the uh, from the right end. Now the next step, erase, uh, because it, it, because we're going to want to do something at the top, and 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 it got too black at the top. So so, so I'm going to take an eraser and throw it away. The next step. We prepared for that by, by taking a, a thin pen and going from the same point at the top, but down to the baseline and, and coming two units from, from the left-hand side. Um, and then um, uh, the next step, um, put in a bar line. Okay, so so, so, so here at the at this at, at this I'll call it the E height. Uh, go from take. Take whatever pen I, I I told it to use. I guess it looks like the same pen we had for the left hand stroke. It says, you know, go from where the where where your second stroke was over to where your first stroke was um, at that at that level, and join those together. So, so you know, you see, I'm not tracing outlines, but I'm saying, draw this according to a structure of a letter A. Next step. Uh, or draw a little serif going out to out, out to the left of that bottom stroke, uh, and uh, what's next? Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, we'll do the other half of the serif. Okay, so each of these was one line of code in the computer. Uh, well, th this last one was done with the, calling a subroutine that makes serifs. Uh, and now, watch closely. The next step you you might not see. Did you see any change? Go back. Okay, I I. I, I I took a little off on the bottom of the serif there. Yeah, it, that's cool. It makes it, you know, you, 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 you can charge another dollar for, for, for font that does that. Okay. okay, so then um, uh, then we put in the, uh, you know, the serifs on the other side, and, and ta-da, we have a capital letter A. All right. Now, that was, that was all done assuming a certain width for the, uh, you know, you know, for the wide pen and, and and for the narrow pen, but but I but I can change that, and and, and so here's the same thing, uh, but making a boldface A instead of instead of a normal A, and so you just for the boldface A you just say that well these pens are, you know, well, actually the um, uh, the unit size could could even be a little a little wider if you want, but the but but you make the pens bolder, uh, and. Uh, uh, and you adjust the you know other things accordingly, uh, and so the same program draws the bold face A, and so I'm I'm saying the type designer tries to imagine not only not that that uh, you, you, that it, the, the goal is to do one typeface, but but you're imagining that that your boss is going to tell you each week to, to do another another version of that typeface, so you might as well figure out in advance what you're going to do. Under all the all the things that he's going to do, so this is this is where the word meta font comes from. Uh, meta, this is a meta design. It means it covers more than one design. Uh, it, 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 it's more abstract level. Um, the, the same thing for a typewriter style. Now, now in a typewriter style, the 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 left stroke and the right hand stroke are both the same thickness, 
um, and uh, and the uh, uh, you know the serifs aren't so sharp. Uh, so and they're uh, but but exact same program, but just change uh, uh, just change your, your preferences or whatever you want to call it, uh, and you and and you get it. So, so this is the, this is way it was done in my first prototype system in 1959, and uh, I, I I learned later that actually uh, uh, this isn't this isn't really the best way to proceed for. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, it, the A will start, start to look a little too dark at the top, where we have these two strokes coming down, and so in order to uh, uh, in, in order to do a little better, you can you you can move the you can move the two strokes apart a little bit, and you can also uh, open up the, uh, the join uh, a little way in order. To, in order to do that, so so I learned these re these refinements later, um, but but they could all they could all be b built in very simply to the instructions that I'm giving the computer on how to draw a letter. Now now uh, starting in 1980, I I, I I that's when I first met Herman Zopp and he came to Stanford, and and here, and here we are looking. And this was uh, uh, I don't know maybe, maybe three or four days after we had met each other and. And we were trying to design an FT ligature to see if, it, you know, if that would help if we had a F, FT combination. Um, and and so I'm sitting here with with, you know, with with an old computer terminal that we had. We had very li limited uh, equipment for, actually for, for displaying all these things in those days. Um, <clears throat> well, let me go back to the. The, the the problem I faced uh, uh, I was trying to I was trying to make the fonts that would be used to typeset my book on art of computer programming um, and the um, and my book had first been done in the, in the sixties with with beautiful uh, well it was it was called the the, the, the monotype. 8A modern 8A fonts, which had which had many many sorts to handle mathematics, and so at that time, all of my favorite textbooks, the ones that had had been most beautifully typeset, were using this monotype uh, uh, font and all, all the collection of mathematical things that it had with it. So that was my standard of excellence, um, and um, and I thought, okay, well, all I have to do is tell a computer how to. How to do what that was, and then I then then I could then I could types of my books because uh, the, uh, uh, the there there was a revolution in uh, in uh, in in the industry where they essentially replaced all of the hot metal types with with uh, at first with, with with photographic types and then later with with, with uh, computer types, but nobody cared about the way the mathematics looked. And so, uh, and uh, and so, uh, the, the proofs that I got from my publisher were incredibly bad, and I just couldn't stand writing a book that was going to look that way. Um, and so, I, um, uh, I I found out all it was all it needed was a small matter of computer programming. I just needed to uh, all I had to do was write a computer program that would that, that would make the letter forms the way they should be, and then actually uh, I would, it would be possible to do a decent book. Um, uh, and uh, so I started looking at the history of it, and, and, and here are some designs of the letter S that go back to the uh, well, the 1400s and, and 1500s, uh, and then the uh, um, the the one at the lower right was designed for uh, uh, Louis the 14th in in um, in France. That would be 1700, uh, uh, maybe maybe 1734, um, and uh, th so. That's the way that they had used a kind of a mathematical model for for letter form, um, but it didn't look you know this didn't look like the letter S that I wanted to use in my books, um, and uh, and so for a while I thought maybe I should try you know, like, you know just just rewrite my book so I didn't need the letter S, <laughs> um, uh, but then I'd have to leave Stanford. I mean. I, I don't <laughs> So, so, so that wasn't an option. So I worked on for so I worked for a while, and and 
And in fact, I went uh, several days without sleep, uh, uh, not being able to figure out what a letter S should really look like. Uh, and uh, and I showed the I showed my my proofs to my wife in despair, and she she looked at it and said, "Done. Why don't you make it look like an S?" <laughs> yeah, but what what was it? But, well, but fi finally, I figured out a nice a, a nice w way to uh, that. I think the Greeks would have would have enjoyed the uh, properties of of conic sections, and and I got so that I so so that I could make. Uh, a, a, you know, a fairly decent letter S, and and then the question was, what what slope should I use in the middle? So 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 all of these S's come from a, a program that varies in one in one way, just as as to as, you know, should it be pretty horizontal or should should, should it cut at a, at a sharp diagonal? And um, you know, you know, and then I but but the the main thing I is I had to. Find some mathematics so that if I set that angle, then it would plan the rest of the curves in something that that would that that, that wouldn't be too bad. So this was 1959. This is when I'm just learning uh, uh, this stuff, but but I, it, it shows you some of the things that I got into when I when I faced the problems of of, of telling a computer what what a letter uh, form looks like. Here's a, here's a later example. Uh, this was, I think, uh, you know, I, I presented this in in 1983, which was which was a special conference uh, of the of of A Type I. Uh, this is the Association Typographic International, uh, um, and and Stanford had a wonderful week in, in the summer of of 1983, where which was called Digital Typography: The Computer in the Hand, and we had. Uh, all of the leading uh, uh, type people uh, that, that that Chuck had 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 worked, Chuck Bigelow had worked very hard to uh, to plan this week, and it, and it was it was kind of a climactic thing for the whole field, 1983, and and this is these slides are I, I gave it as an example. Here I have here I have two uh, 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 two things varying in in, in what in one case the uh, uh, it's the it's the Slope in the middle. In the other case, it's the thickness in the middle, because that's another question: how how thick should the S be? Uh, have to do it. Um, here's an example, another example that I gave, how designing this, uh, the the number six. How high should the bowl be? You know, so 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 the same program uh, will draw uh, uh, different variations, but you but, uh, but you but you tell the you you can. You, you know, I can change the position of, of of one of the points, and then the other things uh, try to adapt themselves uh, uh, in a decent way to uh, to those. Um, now, um, at that at that summer workshop, uh, Sumner Stone de developed the logo for uh, for it, that, and everybody was everybody was wearing. Uh, this T-shirt. I, sa I saved this T-shirt from 1983. It's, it, it's getting a little big, but but the but, but uh, and, and, well, you can't see the, there are all, all the letters on there. But 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 he but but he but all, all through that week we were seeing the, these five letters, um, and and so I I said okay in my talk I should show how 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 Metafont uh, would approach a font of this kind in, instead of that. Oh, you know, modern 8A font that I had before. So, so here we have Sumner's A, except that I that I abstracted it and converted it into a, you know, a certain number of of other points. But it it still has many of the same properties. You know, you have this big stroke that goes from the top to the lower right hand corner, and and. Uh, here, you know, I have an angle as to which, as as to how the pen is going to do, and the amount of tapering that's going on in in the pen. But you see, there's a point number four there at the lower right, and I, I placed that that about a unit and a half from the right edge, and and you know, I placed the point two at the top, uh, essentially in the middle, and then I have these other things coming on the left, and you know, uh, 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 so so it's not. Uh, it's not totally different from what we had before, and uh, 
And, and with this program, again, you, you have lots of parameters, that, uh, lots of knobs that you can turn uh, if you want to change the, uh, the characteristics of the A. So you can, you, you can vary the amount of tapering and the thickness of the strokes and, and so on, all, all coming out of the same program saying how to draw a, a letter A uh, if, you, if you set your preferences for the, for, for the different uh, aspects of the thickness. And, and this is the program itself. Um, I, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I don't expect you to read it, but anyway, you can you, you can see that it that is there. Um, okay. and, and, and all of this is in uh, in my book, uh, Digital Typography. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now um, <clears throat> we were looking at the, at at the example of 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 the word metaphon uh, enclosed in border designs. Uh, so, the, and, and in the title of, uh, so, so when I use metaphon, I, you know, I have a special font that, that I use for, for the word M-E-T-A-F-O-N-T. Uh, that, that's, that's the logo. This font is called logo. And, uh, and it's, a completely, it's an incomplete font. It, 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 only has, uh, it only has enough letters that it needs. And so it has the letter F-A-T. You, you can say the word fat. And, and you can say the word omen, and uh, you know, and that's enough to make metaphor. Um, and and it, and we never did, uh, you know, I don't know what a B looks like in this font or a C, uh, although we did add a a P and an S so that we could make metapost, which is another program later on. Okay, but 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 now this uh, 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 this is an example how, uh, that that you know that. Uh, 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 what would I say? Very simple uh, t to make all those letters because you see th how, how short the programs are. Um, t let's see what if, if I if I go up. Uh, can I t take for example n here? Um, <clears throat> so, so the program for the n is only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lines long. Uh, well, the, the first line just says you know, it's going to be an N. It's going to be 15 units wide, and then it tells where. Th th then I have formulas that say where are points one, two, three, and four, uh, and five uh, are to be located. And for example, it says bot y1 is is minus o. That says that the bottom of, of those things sh should be a, a little overshoot below the baseline. Um, and the, and the top should be a little overshoot above the uh, uh, above the height of the character, and then I say draw one to two to three, so that draws this, and then I draw four, four to five, which draws the, that one, and that and the last line just says put labels on it one two three four five in case you want to see what in case you want to see the proof sheets. So uh, here 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 was an example of a font that also. The, the, the ligature is that says bring the T and the A a little close together if, 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 if T is followed by a letter A. Okay, so that's an example of the of the code that that one writes for um, uh, for um, to create to create letters. Whoops! <clears throat> so here's a, here's a picture of of some of our group in 1985. Um, Richard Southall is the guy on the left. He's, he, he died last year. He was a, he, uh, uh, wrote, wrote some important books about typography, and and he was uh, he, he was uh, kind of my main permanent uh, besides Chuck Bigelow was my main permanent uh, typographic advisor. Although we had many visitors to our project, um, uh, Art Samuel to the left at that time he was maybe the world's only. Programmer over the age of 80, um, but he was famous for writing the first program to to, uh, uh, to play checkers and and and, and beat a human competitor. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and well, David Fuse, all, all the other people. Uh, 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 John Hobby at uh, at, the, at the left at, at the right uh, was the main wizard who, who who worked out some beautiful mathematics by which Metafont chooses how to how to make very pleasant curves and uh, so so uh, there were other people these are the ones that happened to be there for the picture that day <clears throat> um, 
one of the visitors we had was Herard Unger uh, from Netherlands and his wife. Uh, uh, if, if you go to if you go to Amsterdam, you you will see examples of his typography in the airport, Johan, and, and in all the phone books. And uh, and so he's a wonderful type designer from Netherlands. Came to visit us for for three months, and uh, and and I think it was eighty three. I'm not sure which year, um, but but let's see. Yeah, you can say eighty five because uh, it's not on this slide. Okay, but anyway. Uh, <clears throat> His wife, Marianne, uh, also came, and, and, and she talked about fashion style, uh, styles of, of furniture and, and uh, 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 pottery and, and, and other things not to do with type. And, and Harard, her husband, talked about style in typography. And one of the points that, that Harard made was that uh, uh, Typographic style always lagged by ten years uh, from the from the other kind of style. So, so, in other words, the, you know the styles of, of 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 furniture got to be something called streamlined. Well, then the, there were types that sort of looked streamlined ten ten years later, and so uh, uh, and, and it was a series of seven or eight lectures, and and uh, and they'd given the first six lectures and uh, showing the, this theme in different aspects of of the. Uh, uh, of uh, style of different kinds through the years, uh, uh, like you know, the in Netherlands they had a period called De Steel, and and you know there's Jugendstil and various other kinds of styles, um, and so uh, it, it dawned on me on the morning uh, 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 they were they were scheduled to give at seven o'clock that night they were scheduled to give the, the last lecture in the series, and I woke up in the morning and said you know. If what he's saying is correct, um, then um, uh, there's going to be a, a, uh, the next thing in type design is going to be something for a style that was prominent ten years ago. So, so, what, so what was the style from from 1975? And the answer was punk. And 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 so I said, okay, I'm I'm going to design a font called punk. Uh, that will be the, the, the just the right thing that the type world needs, and but I have to have it ready by seven o'clock that night. Uh, and, and and so I sat down, and uh, and madly I, I don't know if I ever worked so hard. I, I mean, it, it, it's like the demo scene. And if anybody knows it, where, where, where people work and do a lot of hacking. But I but I had only this uh, this one day to do, do my font and and. Um, and I decided uh, uh, that the font would would consist of uh, dots and and lines connecting them, uh, because because I we had seen examples of of, of some uh, patterns and, and and furniture that was that were designed uh, in in the seventy five that that had this this characteristic, and so um, uh, this is my first proof sheet before you know the, I hadn't debugged it at all. This was the first I, I saw of any of the. Of the letters, um, and and it looked pretty it looked, looked pretty awful. But anyway, this was uh, um, uh, after I got it debugged, uh, and we, then we could make the you know, entire character set. That, that day, I I only did the uh, uppercase letters, and 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 I didn't make lower I make lowercase letters. I I well, it's, it's it's small caps anyway, so I use the same program for the lowercase as as the uppercase, and, and, and I only had a few punctuation marks. But I was able to make a handout uh, for, for that night and distribute it at 7 o'clock uh, with, with, with a font that was definitely punk. And, um, and so um, w w one of the things about it is that uh, Matafont includes a random number generator so, so, that every so that every time you generate the punk font is different. Uh, it, 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 you, you don't say go, put a point here, you say put a point approximately here. And then a random number generator gives it a little jiggle, and decides where to put it. So, so each time you you, you see punk, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit different. And 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 the programs for the, for punk uh, uh, look like this. So, so again, they're 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 fairly short. Uh, the first one, like PP, 
it says a punk point, which means I start there and then jiggle. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so, um, uh, now, um, it turned out there was some confirmation because uh, 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 in October of, of 1986, I was, in, I was in the metro in Paris and I saw this sign at the bottom uh, that someone in France had come up with that, with a font that looked very much like, like punk in, in, independently. So, but, but, but also I, at the Boston Art Museum, I, I, I found the pattern up in the upper right-hand corner, which, which Picasso had made in 1924. So he was way ahead of all of us. <laughs> okay, now um, the the highlight of of my work on on type design has a series of fonts, a family of fonts called the computer modern typefaces, uh, which which are the fonts that that are, you know are now used in in my books and uh, also um, I hate to say it but uh, maybe ninety five percent of all Papers that are published by mathematicians and physicists um, uh, these days, and uh, and I have to I have to confess that that I I haven't gotten tired of it yet in my in my own books anyway, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, I, I had lots of help on this o o over the years, of course, uh, because of all the visitors that came, but uh, uh, but. Uh, it's all summarized in, in volume E of a series of five books. Uh, the, the books are about computers and typesetting. I discovered today that the San Francisco Public Library does not have this volume in its collection. I don't know, we'll have to do something about that. But, um, <clears throat> uh, but the, um, uh, it, uh, it, here's, the, here's the title page. Uh, you, uh, you can see the, the computers and typesetting volume E uh, at the top, and then th then here uh, it just shows uh, the, 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 the these letters A, A B C D E had been on the cover uh, on the uh, on the book jacket and and also on the spine of of uh, the first uh, of, of each volume, and you see that that. Uh, the, it shows examples of type morphing from, from one set of parameters to another. So, so at the top we have my, my standard modern font, at the bottom we have the typewriter style font, and then uh, you know 10 steps to, uh, to, uh, to get from one to the other, just a little change uh, at a time. Um, uh, so th these letters are uh, were done uh, with uh, uh, trying to not only tell the computer how to make a pretty good letter A, but to try to make 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 a a, a top quality letter of uh, for each of, each of these letters. In fact, there's there's some 400 more than 400 different glyphs included, um, uh, at, uh, based on uh, what turned out to be 62 different parameters that that you could vary. Um, so you have. Uh, uh, I, I, I talked about the, the uh, you know the, the center height, the body height. The, the, I, I said E height. I just really called the, the the bar height. And uh, uh, so 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 those are are some of the parameters that, that obviously we can change. Then then as we're drawing letters, we can we can talk about the uh, the, the different kinds of thickness of of, of the pens. Uh, how 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 thick is a stem? How thick is a curve? Um, how much does a does a ball uh, does a bulb uh, flare out and so on, um, and uh, on, on other fonts we we can say how much uh, 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 how how sharp they are at, at corners and things like that, um, and and serifs uh, uh, have brackets that, that that we can vary how much the, how how much it drops uh, how how how. <laughs> How far a beak comes down, how how far it extends, uh, um, and you know the the, the, uh, the uh, how much dish there is at the bottom of a serif. I showed you that before. Uh, at the right, we have corrections that, 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 to, to to avoid the V being filled in so much, like I had talked about in letter A. And a notch cut is how, is, is how, how to open up uh, to, to make it. So we have all of these all of these parameters, 
and then then we um, uh, oh, so then I, I can make these for example these extreme examples of the letter capital A all with this program um, and and and, and so, so this program um, uh, you know says pick up uh, a certain pen, but each line of the program says how to position the pen, uh, and you know, one of them will say, you know, I want to go from the left, the left side of the A to the right hand side of the A, so I have to figure out where, where, where they intersect, and so, and, and so the, there's a, a line there that says whatever. You see, the, it's, 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 so, so it says choose whatever line works, uh, whatever point works. Uh, at, at, at the correct angle, and then uh, it turned out that that's enough ma mathematically to uh, to identify the correct uh, uh, the correct thing. So so anyway, th this volume E contains the entire uh, specification of how to draw all the, all of the letters that are used in the, in all of my books, in particular all these five books. So I don't know of anything else in history where the books describe exactly how they're printed, how, how they're made. Every letter in these books is, is described by the programs in these books. And in, in the other books, it tells, gives the programs that, that put the letters into position on the page. So, so it's a self-describing um, uh, book. OK, let's see. This was minus, right? OK, I, I should be able to go to the next page. So. So similarly, the uh, you, need, you need a program for for the AE combination if you're going to if you're going to sell any fonts in Denmark or where it's one of their basic letters or or, or in France, and and so you know, so so on the left hand page you see the uh, you see examples of the of the design with with different kinds of the parameters, and on the right hand side is the complete is the complete program. And uh, and here are two of my main helpers uh, that were advisors as as we were getting the bugs out of this design. And so we looked at many many proofs, and I you know and I would learn how to shave a little bit off of a stem here and there, so that the optical effects. So that that's, uh, that that's Herman up in the middle, and Matthew Carter on the right. Um, now, uh, in conclusion, um, I wanted to show you some of the other things that we've been doing with. That that that, that uh, have been done. One of the one of the early projects done with visitor from China in the early 80s, and and, uh, and, and John Hobby was to d design uh, nice uh, subroutines to do the, the basic parts of Chinese characters. And so we have a, a you know a way to make teardrop shapes and di different kind of strokes, and, and then. Quite adaptable, so that, uh, uh, that, that then this this then can be put into into Chinese font that can be rendered in different style. Um, uh, one of the one of the fun things has been Christmas cards at at the end of the year. Uh, this one was made by Hans Hagen in in uh, Netherlands, uh, using Metafont in an easy way. It just turned out that all of these candles are done by the same program using a random number. Generator to choose the color, and and to choose the size of the of the candle and the and the flame, uh, and, and so so uh, uh, you know each time he generated it, he got another <laughs> another picture like this. His, this was his new his Christmas greeting in um, uh, at year two thousand. He, he, he sang, have, have a good twenty first century. Uh, whoops. I, Okay. Uh, my wife and I, uh, I, I got to show you our Christmas card for 1959. That's when I was first, first, first working on Metafon. Um, and and I, I got to use the computer equipment at Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. Um, and at that time, uh, there, there was a newfangled thing called a color Xerox machine. And, and so I thought, oh, oh, wonderful, I'm going to have a have a Christmas card that says Merry Christmas, um, and, and and it's going to be printed with this color of Xerox machine. Um, so I, so I, I uh, well it turned out that uh, uh, the, the the size of the files that that it took in order to, in order to, in order to send these letters to to that machine were were ten times or twenty times more than 
the, the software had ever seen before. And, you know, so, 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 you know, so, so I would get Mary to go and, the, and it, you know, and then it would, then we would send it to the next, uh, uh, to the next subroutine, it would break, it would crash. And so, oops, we patched that and then we'd get it through that one and the next one would break. And so, and so finally, I, I, I realized I was never going to get Merry Christmas uh, done on the color Xerox machine uh, until uh, all the software had been rewritten at Xerox. Um, so, so, so I settled on the word hark, which, which was just big, enough, you know, just enough that the machine could could, could handle that. Um, and uh, okay, so so that was 1959, and it sh it showed the status of the of, of, of the fonts that I had uh, in the early days before I had met Herman. Um, then um, uh, down below was, was our Christmas card in 1981, where we used the uh, the, the Christmas story from. Um, so, so here, here I was combining font design with uh, uh, with typesetting. What have I got here? I think so, um, so, so you can see that that I had a that I, that I was able to use a bold font and switch with a light font, but then. I used my typesetting system also to arrange the uh, the characters. So this is, uh, you know, the entire Christmas story that that, that we all read to each other. Uh, okay, now uh, then um, here's a here's a card I did uh, uh, 1985, uh, where, where I made a font that that was in, intended for for typesetting Celtic knots. Um, so. So if you look, uh, these little lines will cross over and under each other, and and so I and, and so I I could design uh, this particular grid grid like thing uh, to make a pattern based on Celtic knots and and uh, this this is not in my book digital typography. This is in my book on fun and games, um, which, which is another great book at that day. You know, makes a great Christmas present. <clears throat> um, <laughs> and in 1989. Our, uh, again, we used Metafont for our Christmas card. This time, we had a uh, font called Holly, which just made made Holly uh, leaves and berries. Uh, but I also, but then it's combined with another font that called Jen. My daughter's name is Jen, and I based this font on her handwriting. And so it has lots of uh, of, of special ligatures and things like this uh, 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 to be a fairly good imitation of of uh, my daughter's handwriting. Now, um, in, in recent years, this is this is a paper sent to me from Italy a couple of years ago. Uh, Luigi Scarzo, who is who is uh, uh, who has combined Metafont with, with with another programming language called Lua, so that you can do, do interactive. Uh, uh, you, you can go between Metafont and a and a more traditional. Programming language uh, uh, interactively, and 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 so he's uh, uh, has been working on things like this. And uh, uh, my original title this was this was some work that was actually done in the 90s in Poland. Uh, but but when you have the uh, w w when you have a, a, a electronic form of of characters that shows their structure, you can you can play interesting games with them. And here's another. Uh, uh, so, 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 Going wild with, uh, with that. Okay. All right. So, so, so these are some of the uh, uh, th things that, uh, that that came out of this little project that I that that, that was born uh, uh, came alive 32 years ago, and as I say, it's been a, a, a nice part of my life. Um, Let's see. I have a, I have a little demo that I could that, that I could try, but I uh, uh, but but maybe I'm running over time. So, what, Don't do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I might need I might need Frank's help though. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, yeah. So 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 two weeks ago, a man named Jörg Hudelmeier in Germany sent me a, a a program that he has just de been developing. Uh, for, for an interactive version of of, of Metafont, bring it up. Yeah, bring it up. That was with uh, Safari, wasn't it? I think so. I think just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, so here he. Uh, I, I just wanted to show you. Oops. 
Uh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. So um, uh, I mentioned John Hobby had worked on special formulas for making pleasant curves. And so if, it, if I draw another curve here, oh, I, I, I connected to the wrong one. Well, let, let me move it down here. But anyway, um, Metaphone has, 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 I think, the world's best algorithm for figuring out if you have a bunch of points, what's the, what's the most pleasant curve that you, that you can make without giving any particular extra, extra help to it. And, and and with his program, you can you know you can play around with it and see, see what goes on. But 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 John worked out some beautiful mathematics that made this happen. And, and then this this program also also at the same time it writes out a little metaphor program that corresponds to, to what you did. So now you can edit this program and you can say, oh, you know, pick up a different pen, draw draw the characters with uh, uh, draw with another. And and uh, it has enough that you can actually, uh, uh, you know, save your letter forms and make a new font out of it, and, and does all that behind the scenes. So 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 this is a is a program that that just uh, you, right now in development shows that Metaphon is, uh, uh, is is finding new new friends. Um, uh, uh, the 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 combination with Lua, by the way, also. Uh, Outputs to open type uh, font as well. So, so this is a, a kind of a sampler of, of of my life with 32 years of all this. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Anybody has questions? Raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. By, by the way, I, I should have mentioned the this uh, uh, the, 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 yeah the, the, this example uh, in Poland. I, I should have mentioned that this is Jakowski and Rutska who uh, who did this work because the, their names ought to be mentioned. Okay. So lowercase a. Lowercase six. A. 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 Lowercase Why a. Why is that design in a way that's never written? Why is what? Lowercase a in design that's never written. I never handwrite the lowercase a like it's typed. Ah, uh, yes. Actually, I, I started writing that the lowercase a that way. Sumner, Sumner Stone. So, 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 so there's there's this font called Stone Informal, which uses the which uses the a that that, that we learn in first grade. Um, uh, and uh, and it's just, it's kind of pleasant, but 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 it's interesting that we don't uh, uh, that, that uh, most of us don't <laughs> you know we're never taught to write uh, lowercase a the way it is in a book. Now I also but when you asked your question at first, I was thinking you were going to say why was why was the letter a so ugly in uh, in nineteen the nineteen fifty. Uh, 1979, when I had to hark the word, because the A there was actually, um, you know, when I when I showed it to Chuck Bigelow, Herman Zoff, Matthew Carter, and and uh, you know, Richard Southall, and and uh, you know various other people, uh, they all quickly corrected it, um, and so I learned how to how to completely change the uh, the, the A so, so that you know my my original. Uh, what, what I thought before I had uh, before I had, had done any years of apprenticeship uh, was 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 quite different from the A that now is in computer mind. <laughs> There's one question here. Yeah, so, um, I, I can repeat your question. If you Okay, so so the question is, uh, uh, bringing artificial intelligence I I into this AI. In fact, this is this kind of interesting because uh, because Doug Hofstetter, uh, uh, who's one of the, uh, he he wrote a very in influential paper, so, sort of saying that 
that he said the most fundamental problem of artificial intelligence is, what is the letter A? And my answer to that, I, I mean, okay, you know artificial intelligence called AI. So please, the, the most fundamental question about AI is, what is the letter A? And my answer was, and the second most is, what is the letter I? Some people get it. And so, okay. so okay. But, but, but essentially, he, he, his article showed about 50 examples of the letter A. Uh, and, and, you know, in saying, you, you, and in some way, we, we know that, that some of these will not go with other letters B somehow. But, you know, for, for, from seeing the letter A, could you imagine the entire font? Um, and, and, and he asked this question as, as, as an example of, of perception, just to point out how little, uh, how little we know how to automate things like this. Um, so, uh, but it, it, my, my opinion is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it, we always get a lot of, um, uh, of knowledge if we, try to, if, if we try to teach a computer how to do something, then we realize how little we know. And then we, uh, uh, so at, in the process of doing this, we're learning a whole, whole lot more about whatever we're doing. Um, uh, on the other hand, I, I, you know, I, um, uh, it, it, since we learn more in the process, uh, we're also getting ahead at, and, 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 and that's that much further ahead than we were before. And so, and so, so far, we, uh, the computer hasn't caught up. Uh, you know, we, st we, we stay a leap ahead. But, but, but questions like this are always, are always insightful to, to improve our knowledge. Okay, I, I haven't had any questions. Hi, I'm curious. Um, if you wrote a brand new typesetting system to publish your book, and if uh, Park couldn't even print your Christmas card, how did you manage to get your book printed? How did I manage to get my book printed? How did the publisher handle your files? Oh, we're, we're, so I had a very good relationship with, with my publisher, actually. Uh, uh, Addison Wesley uh, was, was the only technical publisher that had its own in-house in uh, type people. Uh, you know, McGraw Hill and Elsevier and so on would would, would farm out the, uh, uh, the, their thing and outsource it. But Addison Wesley, right next to the building, was Hans Wolf's composition shop, and and this this man who had dedicated his life to finding the right way to typeset technical books, uh, had had uh, lots of monotype machines and really skilled people working for him. Uh, but then the, uh, uh, in the 70s, when all these, uh, all these hot metal machines were, uh, were retired and these other people who had done the typesetting uh, uh, had, you know, had nothing to do with it, uh, then uh, Hans was at his, you know, was doing his best to try to find uh, any place in the world that, that that could make my books look like they did before, and and, and failing. But 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 so so, Addison Wesley uh, contributed I, I don't know thirty thousand dollars or something for, for 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 us to buy the Alpha Type uh, typesetter, which was one of the first uh, uh, digital typesetting machines. And and uh, and so I, that was the machine on which I made my uh, the edition of my book, uh, which they which they printed then. So I would I would send them the output of that machine, and they would photograph it the way they they used to from their uh, from their other equipment, and 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 they took it the rest of the way. Hey, so um, I'm curious with your background in computer science and mathematics, how did you stand up? Sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm just curious, like, how did, how are you inspired to, um, pursue this direction in creating a font format and like, what was your inspiration in, or like, how did you become interested in calligraphy and type and become connected with so, Herman Zapp and Matthew yeah, Carter? So, so, first as an author, I had spent, you know, hundreds of hours proofreading books and so I thought I knew about letters. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then when I saw the ugly letters uh, that, that were done with these inferior equipment of the 70s, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, I naturally had, I, I, don't, I don't know of anybody who would, who would have reacted, uh, you know, negative to that. Um, and, uh, but I did, uh, uh, but, but the aha moment was 
was when I was on, on, on a committee from Stanford uh, uh, to, to redesign our, our qualifying exams for our grad students. And, and so, we, so we were checking out the, uh, uh, the, you know, to change the reading list for the next year. And, and a new book had come out by an MIT professor that had been typeset in, down in Southern California on a new, on a new machine that was digital. Uh, so, so we had at our at our lab we had we we had something called the Xerox graphics printer, which was uh, 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 it, it, it was about 150 dots per inch uh, to 250 dots per inch, depending on where you were on the page. But it was it, it was very low resolution, but it was but it was digital, uh, and it would make it would make something that looked a little bit like books, but it was it was it was crummy. So I never thought of of of, of doing it that way. However, when I went to Southern California to see the proofs of this new book on AI by Pat Winston, uh, uh, which has turned out is, is in the third edition now or something like that. But anyway, the first proofs of Pat Winston's book were done uh, for the first time uh, with, with this uh, uh, laser cut machine made at Triple I in Southern California. They, and and um, I couldn't tell the difference between that and metal type. Um, and so I. You know, so you know, I, I grew up in, in in Wisconsin, where we have, uh, uh, where where, where um, uh, it was illegal to, to eat margarine because because margarine, you know, wasn't butter, and and, and Wisconsin is the <laughs> Wisconsin is the dairy state, and so um, and and so I, you know, and, and 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 actually, I thought margarine tasted awful too, and 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 so something like that with type, you know, I I I would see crude digital type and looked awful to me, so, so I never thought about it. But when I saw this, this example of high resolution digital type done with a really precise machine, I, you know, I couldn't tell the difference. And so I said, this is like having butter instead of margarine, even though it's done with, you know, it's not done with metal, it's done with, totally with bits, zeros and ones. And I know how to do bits. I mean, if there's anybody in the world, you know, the world that's going to make that's going to be all, all I have to do is write write programs that 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 compute zeros and ones. Where I put one where I want ink and zero when I don't want ink, and so that's my life: zeros and ones. And so I said, okay, uh, I, I was planning to take my my sabbatical year in 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 Chile. I wanted to learn Spanish and. And and we had made made arrangements, but uh, but within a week of of my going to Southern California and seeing this book, canceled all those plans and said, no, I can stay at Stanford. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna you know write these programs that that put the bits on the page. Well, I thought I could do it in a year. It, it, it took it took a bit longer, but but um, <laughs> but, uh, but that's how. The, he, he, I, um, in general, I'd never been very good at estimating how difficult things were going to be. <laughs> One last question. I think this will dovetail very well with the previous question. Um, as you started on this journey, was there a point you thought, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into as it proved to be more complicated than perhaps you first thought? Yeah, there, there, was, there was always a question of where to stop and how, how to make an end, you know, how, how to responsibly exit from, <laughs> from, from this work to, uh, to something that I knew I could do, do well because I can, oh, you have all these all these artists, and, you know, who who, who were uh, so so uh, so I, I I worked out a strategy where I, whereby I you know, I could put the thing on a stable ground, but it but it would take five years of work. So 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 uh, and at the end, I had to make all kinds of changes in order to adapt to uh, all the all the new. Uh, you know, Unicode and things like this. All the, at first, I was just designing without accents and without, without, but but I had to. I, but, but so so many people were using my system that I had to had to find a a, a way for it to become uh, uh, to to work with all languages and not just English. Uh, so that it did take five years. But 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 then I worked out a way that that I, that uh, it, it it could become. A, uh, a stable fixed point on which other people could build, and, and, and that I wouldn't have to be coming up with a new version every year. But that the, the uh, one of the virtues of it was that it did not change, uh, and, and it was buildable. It was a, it was it was something that 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 would stay 
uh, uh, hopefully 50 years from now, people will still be able to use the source files uh, that, that, that they do now, you know, if they want to. <clears throat> okay, thanks very much for uh, <clears throat>